Okay, so we touched on this before. We touched on, let's see, what did we cover? Hmm. We covered, let's go to read me. We covered variables, let versus const, data types. Uh, and now what we are going to do is we are going to finally get to non-primitive data types. The bad news is, is that this introduces a lot of complexity to your code. The good news is they're useful as fuck. And there's only two that you really gotta know for right now. There's two main types of data structures that we deal with, okay? The main two that you're gonna have to know about are arrays and objects. Objects. Okay, so arrays are super simple to make. I am now going to make an array of strings. So I'm going to say const, we'll call it names, okay? And this is going to be basically just a list of strings. So for example, let's go uh, John. We've got Hector, we've got Lawrence, we've got Cam, we've got Cirillo, am I missing anyone? We got Dylan, beautiful. So here are some names, all right? Let's go ahead and console.log this whole thing. So I'm just gonna console.log names okay i'm gonna go up here whoops that is way too much uh, i am just going to run node and then app.js bam and hey look it literally looks the exact same when i spit it out that's pretty cool but not all that useful until we start learning the different things that we can do with arrays so first of all the most important thing i think that we could do with an array is we can you can index an array. So we can index an array. So let's go ahead and indent this person. And we can index. The index means is let's say I want to grab the verse, the first term. I can go ahead, put some square brackets after this. And then the first term is actually the zeroth term in programming. Well, it depends on the language you're in. But in JavaScript, it's the zeroth term. Right? So I'm gonna go ahead and log this. And hey, look, I grabbed the name John. I can do the zeroth term. Let's see, we have zero, one, two, three, four, five. Let's grab the fifth term. And I expect Dylan to come out. Bam, Dylan indeed. And you know what? Let's just see what happens when we grab the sixth term. Oh, it says undefined. Why might it say undefined? Hmm. Well, the reason why it's saying undefined is because we're basically trying to grab a name that does not exist. This list is not long enough. So that means that we're getting a value of undefined. Cool, interesting to note, interesting to note. What else can we do with an array? We can check to see if a value is inside. Uh, so we could do console.log names.includes. We're going to see if uh, our array includes, uh, I don't know, the name Jeff. And false. We don't have a Jeff in here. All right. I'm going to comment that out. Let's see that a save. Cool. Now we get false. And then you know what? Let's just do. John, and hey, it does include John. So there's some other things you could do with arrays. There's actually a lot you could do with arrays. Uh, we could also, we can chop the array up. So I can slice an array. Maybe I wanna get rid of that first term. Well, what I could do is console.log, uh, let's go names.slice, and I think that syntax will just chop off the first one. Nope, 
I have to do slice at one, I think we'll do it. We'll find out. Yep, if I sliced it at one, I chopped off the first term. There's a bunch of different things you can do with arrays. I actually don't want you to get too stressed out about all of them. The really, the number one thing is this index. The fact that you can index an array is probably the most important thing you're gonna be doing here because this combined with other techniques that we're gonna create is gonna be the basis for how we do a whole bunch of shit. So the number one thing is that you can index it and notice when you index it, you're indexing it by position. So for example, this is the zeroth term. This is the first term, yada, yada, yada. In contrast, now let's talk about objects. Now in JavaScript, they're called objects. If you're familiar with Python, they might be called dictionaries. In Ruby, they're called hashes. We are going to call them objects while we are in JavaScript, okay? So I am going to now do a, I'm gonna make a new uh, object right here. So I am going to make an object and we are going to call it people, okay? And here's what you, or we're gonna make it person, okay? Maybe I wanna have an array of people, but instead of actually just storing their names, I wanna store something more complex. I wanna store this person's name. I wanna store their address. I wanna store their social security number, date of birth, all that good shit, all right? So what I could do is I could say, let's make this person John, okay? I have a data type that is an object and I'm setting it to a name of John. And what I can do is I can give John different properties. I can give John a name and his name will be John. I can give John an age. There has to be commas in between each line. I can give John an age and John's age will be 20, am I 28 now? Jesus Christ. And a social security number, which can be none of your fucking business. Cool. And now I have created a John object. Let's go ahead and see the types of things I could do with a John object. Well, much like an array, I can also index this object, right? I can definitely index it. The only difference is I'm not indexing it by position. So if you noticed here, it's I'm going zero, one, two, three. Instead, I'm indexing it by this right here, which is called a key. For example, let's go ahead and console.log John indexed at name. So I'm going to pull out John's name and you'll notice, cool, I did create, I pulled out the name John. Um, in JavaScript, most languages won't let you do this. JavaScript is nice in that it will. You can actually just do John.name. That works too. Uh, get used to both ways. Be able to do it both ways. But um, I'm going to index John at name. And what's cool about this is it actually doesn't care about the position on here. If I index John at name, it pulls out the name. If I index John at age, it pulls out the age. If I index John at uh, SSN, of course, it's going to pull out none your fucking business. Good. So inherently, these are the two types of data structures we are going to be working with the most. Now, you can create much more complex data structures by what we would call nesting. For example, maybe I wanna store information on the entire class. So what I might do here, we are going to call this nested data structures. Sounds super scary, I know. That's what we're gonna be doing next. So what I could do now is maybe I want to store John, Hector, Lawrence, Cam, Dylan, Cyril. I want to store all of those, but I don't want to create a new variable for each one. Well, here's what you could do. Check this out. 
const, let's call it class mates. And we are going to set it equal to, I want you to take five minutes and see if you could make a classmates nested data structure. If you have no fucking clue what you're doing, take a guess. I'll give you a hint. Here, we gave um, each term inside of this names array is the same data type. Here we have a string, here we have a string, here we have a string. We can make it a more complex data type and that's exactly what we wanna do. So if I wanted to make a data structure that represented my entire class, what might be a really good one to use? Take five minutes to try and figure that out. I'm gonna do about 10 seconds on here because we have class in seven minutes and I wanna get finished with this video. All righty, 10, nine, eight, pause the video, seven, six, five, four, three, two, motherfucking one. All right, cool. So the data structure I would choose would be, whoops, I would make an array of objects. So let's break that down a little bit. So my array of objects would look something like this. I would have an array and then I would have an object for John and then a comma and then an object for Lawrence and then a comma and then an object for Hector and so on and so forth. And you know what, let's go ahead and fill these out. Now it's good to know that tab wise, a lot of times the way you will see this written out is like this, you will see um, you will see it like, ah, oh, okay, here's one level, whoops, here's one level going from here to here, inside of that level, now you can look in here to here, and then inside of each of these objects, it will be indented one. So here is the base layer, indented one, now I know I'm inside of an object inside of the array, so let's give it uh, some properties, I'm going to give it a name, John, uh, age, here, I'm just going to copy my shit from here. Whoops. Bam. And you know what? I'm going to copy this format rather than uh, doing this over and over again. So cool. We'll have John. We can do Hector. I think you're 28. Uh, I don't know. Whatever. Also, Nanya. And we'll have Lawrence. And for now, that'll be enough. It'll do the trick. All your fucking business, JK. All right, I'm really not feeling very creative. I feel like Lawrence is like 23, but I'm probably wrong. Uh, and then we got Sorella. And then let's not forget about Dylan. What is Cirilla, like 30? I don't really know. Uh, what it do? And one more, uh, we will do Dylan. Age, I feel like he's like 25 or something like that. Uh, Cam E is for nerds. Great, and now let's go ahead and talk about how we might index it. I'm just gonna comment out all of these console.logs so we're not getting all that shit when we try to console.log things. Okay, so what I am going to do here is I am going to, I want to console.log Lawrence's age. Okay, so first let's start with people or is it classmates? We're gonna do classmates. Let's log that whole thing. So I do this and hey, look, I get this nice little object. Let's try classmates indexed at zero and see what we get here. Hey, that's just the Hector object. That's kind of cool. Well, you know what? We want to grab the Lawrence object. Lawrence is the third one down. Guess what the index would be? You're right, it's two. So I am going to instead log out classmates two and this should pull out the Lawrence object. Now this whole expression right here actually just evaluates to this value. 
What's cool about this in programming, this is called referential transparency. If anybody's curious, don't stress too much about it now. What's cool about this though, is right at the end of this, I can just index it again at age. And hey, now I have Lawrence's age. If I wanna check someone else's age, I could maybe do, let's call this four. Uh, and I don't know who four is, but I guess it's probably Dylan. What? No, it's four is Cirillo, I guess. I, I don't know. So anyways, uh, hopefully you get the idea where what's happening is this whole thing indexes the uh, object in the array. And then off of that object, we can pull off its age. Now this, I'm assuming just watching this for a little bit, you're starting to ask yourself, Oh man, I f I'm starting to feel like maybe I could get some shit to click soon. And hopefully that's what you're feeling. And that's exactly how you should feel because that's exactly what it is. And you just got to stick with it. We're going to be there soon, I promise, where you're going to feel like a programmer in no time. All right, mad love. I'm going to see y'all in class.